Hey guys, it's Bridgette with San Diego Seed Company, and today we're at a Ramona farm, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about plant biology. Gonna get a little geeky with it, and just kinda jump into what are plants thinking? I'm basically gonna narrate a plant's life for you, <laughs> and tell you what they're thinking and why they're doing it, because that is applicable to you as a backyard gardener. Knowing that information can help you know why the plant is behaving the way that they are. So before I get into that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we put out a video. So I have some lettuce here that is going to flower and then going to seed. That is the purpose of this product for us. This is what we want. Now you may have seen this happen many times in your garden and been like, well, why is it doing that? Or what is it doing? Basically what's happening is this plant is responding to the longer hours of sunlight because it was planted in the fall. What happens in the fall? Days get shorter, then days get longer in the spring. So the plant goes, oh gee whiz, summer is coming and then fall's gonna come, so I need to flower and I need to set my seed and put my progeny out into the world before winter comes. That's what this plant is thinking. It's responding to the longer hours of sunlight to know that summer's coming and what comes after summer? Fall. What comes after fall? Winter. And so the plant is working really hard to try to put its seeds out into the universe so that it can reproduce, reseed, and basically continue to reproduce. So what we're seeing here right now is basically plant sex. These plants are, they're doing it. They are, uh, <laughs> they are opening up their flowers so that they can receive pollen so that they can pollinate, so that then they can develop seed. Seed is their babies, that's what they're putting out into the world, and so the flowers need to open up to receive the pollen to make that happen. So what you see right here is the plants basically getting ready to set their seed, put it out into the universe, and hopefully continue to reproduce. Now what does this mean to you guys as a backyard grower? Well, I think it's worthy to know why this happens and that it is a natural process and you can't stop it. This is what the plants were made on this earth to do. They were not made to produce beautiful succulent heads of lettuce that we're gonna chop up and put bacon and sour cream on and you know, or ranch or whatever. They were made to reproduce. We have over time selected and bred them to become more succulent and more digestible and more pleasing to the eye, more uniform all those things, we have made them that way. But in the end, nature always wins and what they wanna do is go to seed. So in your garden, for those of you who are growing, it's May right now and you're probably seeing a lot of this if you have lettuce growing. It's because the days are long enough that it's telling the plant to go to flower. Once it gets to this point, the game is over. You cannot cut these down here at the bottom and expect more leaves to grow without them being bitter. Because the plant is going to flower, it's actually putting some bitter agents into its leaf so it's less likely to get nibbled by animals. And it really becomes unedible at this point. I mean, chickens might like it, you can give it to your rabbits, your animals, but you're not gonna wanna eat it. So once you see this stalk and you see it starting to flower, game over, cut it down, pull it out, start over if you need to, or also plant more seasonally appropriate vegetables. Our lettuce season is starting to come to an end unless you use protective measures like shade cloth, which can help lengthen your season. But right now you wanna put in your tomatoes, your eggplants, your squash, all the things that love really long, hot days. Lettuce is not one of them. So that, in a nutshell, is what the plant is doing and why it's doing it. It's a totally natural process, but hopefully it will be a signal to you to know that it's time to change what crops you're growing. Now, you don't necessarily have to pull it out. If you wanna save seed, go for it. Once the flowers have opened, then they're gonna close, and it's gonna take quite a long time, several weeks, for the seeds to develop. Once they have gotten to the point where they're at, um, what we call shatter point where they can break and you can actually see the lettuce seed in your hand. Then you can shake those into a paper bag, you can save that seed. Lettuce is a really easy plant to save seed from. And so by all means, go for it. Now let's check out another cool plant that many of you may have never seen going to flower. This is Ethiopian kale and it is- Hold on, you did not say Ethiopian kale. Thank you, and then did you see me stop? Yeah. Cause I was like, wait, okay. Yep, you're right, totally. Arr! 
work. Okay, this is Portuguese kale. And you can see by the flowers, the immature flowers, it looks a lot like broccoli. Well, why is that? It's in the broccoli fa family. It's very similar. But the blooms are also very different because it is in a subset of the broccoli family. It's actually Brassica rapa, um, not Brassica oleraceae, which is what regular broccoli is, which is the beautiful yellow flowers. This is blooming because we're doing seed production of it. These leaves, if you really wanted to, you could eat them, but again, they're gonna be bitter. We actually love to feed them to our chickens. They love it. Um, and it's a great little green treat for them. But once the plant has gotten to this point, it's pretty much ending its life cycle. You can see that it has the flowers and then it's got these skinny little pods which will swell up and become full of seeds which we'll harvest at the end of the summer. So it's doing exactly what it was put on this earth to do, produce seed, pass on its progeny. Um, but at this point, not really good eating. If you have this in your backyard garden and you don't want to save the seed from it, pull it out and put a tomato in. It's time for tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, squash, all your warm season crops. I wouldn't waste the space on something like this unless you intend to harvest the seed from it. So now I want to show you my all time favorite flower, vegetable flower that is. And the reason why you've probably never seen these is because you actually eat the root of this flower. It's called the carrot. It is stunning. It is such a beautiful flower. In the mornings, it's totally covered with um, ladybugs and bees, and it's just a beautiful crop. And you probably don't see it flower because you want the carrot, so you harvest the carrot to eat. Once you eat the carrot, it's obviously not gonna go to flower. This is going to be um, for seed production. For those of you who are flower growers, this looks very similar to Queen's Anne's Lace, which is actually the wild, it's a wild carrot variety, so super similar. This can actually cross with Queen's Anne's Lace. Um, but it's a gorgeous flower, and um, this, all this row of carrots, they're going to flower so they can set their seed. At this point, their roots are really hard, really fibrous, not worth eating. If your carrots are doing this, this is a sign that you left them in the ground way too long. All right, so remember, when you're spending time in the garden, really pay attention to what is going on and think about why it's happening. I just gave you a, a long spiel on why your plants flower, what they're doing, what they're thinking, why it matters, what the biology of that process is. But I encourage you to try to learn other processes in the garden because it makes us closer to nature and helps us understand that there are things happening around us that we don't have any control over. So get in your garden, pay attention, see what's happening, and then share it with friends and neighbors.